We're here at the International Conference on AIDS with uh, Roger Sapiro, who's with the uh, Harvard School of Public Health. And you have just uh, finished a study called the, the Mana Bana? Mabana. Ma Mabana yeah. study, which um, we'll let you, let you explain it uh, because I think be, you do a lot better than I would. So we, um, so HIV in pregnancy is a particular problem because uh, um, we, we know that if we don't do anything at all, 40% uh, of infants are, are going to uh, get HIV from their moms, 30 to 40%. So with various regimens, you can get that down by giving uh, regimens to women during uh, pregnancy and then at delivery. What's a real problem is breastfeeding because um, breastfeeding saves lives in Africa and formula feeding is unsafe in many places and not feasible. But uh, so protect, but 40% of all breast of all the transmission that occurs can occur during breastfeeding. Um, so an absolute rate of you know six, five to twelve percent, depending on how long breastfeeding occurs. So we did a study in Botswana where we gave 730 uh, women maximally effective heart, so um, three uh, antiretrovirals, and we gave um, we did the this was the first trial to randomize during pregnancy to two different heart regimens, and we also gave sicker women a, a third regimen, uh, and um, and what we found was that overall antiretroviral suppression was extremely high uh, in all of the arms, over 90%. It was 93, 95% at delivery and through breastfeeding. Mm -hmm. uh, and, uh, and what we found uh, even more strikingly was that we lowered the mother-to-child transmission rate to 1% overall. So that's a rate that's similar to what we achieve in the United States or in Europe, but without breastfeeding. So what we found is that we can, uh, you can safely breastfeed uh, if the mother takes uh, the antiretrovirals through that through that period through of breastfeeding. The, yes, and it was a six it was a six month period of breastfeeding in our study, uh, and about seventy one percent of women breastfed beyond five months and weaned between the fifth and sixth month, uh, and almost no women breastfed longer than that. So there was almost no uncovered breastfeeding. You had two uh, two that broke through. Is that what yeah, there were two transmissions um, Any out ideas of where that came from. We don't know why those two transmissions occurred. There was no uh, test for uh, resistance. No, the, no, this was standardized. Yeah, method. and in fact, um, uh, the, the, the of the two transmissions that did occur in breastfeeding, one of them had a very high baseline viral load, which we know is a risk for transmission in general. Another. May have had adherence issues, so there may have been reasons for each of those. However, when we looked at the virus in the breast milk of those women, um, it was actually suppressed before and after. So it was a bit of a mystery, um, and we're still working on why those but two somewhere in there occurred. they could have had a blip. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. So, and that's not unusual. Right, but the, is, yeah. but, the um, but it's important to keep it in context that two transmissions out of 730 yeah, was, huge. It's, it's, was a yeah, tiny it's, number. Yeah, it's a huge, huge scenario. So, uh, are we in a position where this, does this need further research or is this stand on its own? Or? I think it stands on its own. I think, um, I think we know that this works. I think the, 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 the questions become up, uh, at the policy level. Mm -hmm. To whom should this apply? Um, should all women uh, get this strategy or um, women who are at lower risk, at higher CD4 counts, for example, mm -hmm. might there be um, a cheaper or easier strategy that would apply to them. Um, we don't know those answers yet, especially above a CD4 count of 350. I think we don't know what the, what the best sort of policy regimen is. What we do know is this is one strategy that does work. Now, the, when, when we do a study, we really have the most optimal scenario. We have the best candidates for the study, likely, I mean, it, well, hopefully. So when we put it into the real yeah. world, we'll probably not see the same results necessarily. Sure. But, but so we want to make sure that we adhere to the parameters of the study as closely in practical right. experience. So this is, you know, when they say the way it was studied, we have to exercise right. it out in, right. in the general public. That's a, that's a good point. I mean, one thing we tried to do in this study is make it very generalizable. Mm -hmm. And we enrolled even the sickest women. You know, a lot of studies just enroll healthier women. Women, et cetera. We actually enrolled even sick, very, you know, sick women. They were in our observational arm. Not, we didn't randomize so it was them. Real world. It was very scenario. any CD4 yeah. count was eligible. There were very, there were exclusion criteria, but there were very few. Um, you know, it, it were very few. But you know, it's a good point. I mean, the sickest of the sick may not have made it into the study. Um, the le le the women who enter the study are very motivated because they join a study. Mm -hmm. So so maybe that is a reason why. But um, but, um, but the same motivation may apply to anyone. That's that's 
saying, hey, look, that's this right. is a, especially now that there's evidence yeah. that this is an effective thing. But I think that's part of the pitch when you say, okay, this study was done and the way it was done, it was really effective. So if you want it to be effective, yeah. you really have to follow the criteria of the study and, and you right. will probably come out with a trial that is not That's right, HIV it's achievable, effective. that's right. Yeah. So uh, are we, this is just kind of an ethics question, are we, you know, this is because we have no other ability to continue treatment, but, but it would be optimal to continue the women on treatment. Well, um, over, uh, over 350, we don't know the answer to that. I mean, the recommendations is 350 sort of in the United States. Mm -hmm. In Botswana, the, the recommendations are um, less than 200. Mm -hmm. uh, they stand treatment. And we, we, of course, followed that. And all women who qualified by Botswana criteria continue. were continued for their own treatment. Um, it, it actually is now raised to 250, and they're probably talking about raising it further. What we've, of course, followed is the standard of care in Botswana um, for, for um, treatment. And we're lucky because in Botswana they have a, a national treatment program. And they, they, they're really the leader in Africa in terms of a government-sponsored national treatment program. And the, gov the government of Botswana pays for and the, the drugs that for women who qualify for treatment, uh, even women in our study. So the transition works. They get off the treatment. Uh, they get off. Right. They either get off the treatment or they stay on treatment. Depending That's right. On, depending upon the criteria. That and then they, they go. Follow. And if they go off treatment, they're monitored very closely. And they go back on treatment if their CD4 count drops down to a level that requires it. And we're still doing longer-term follow-up to look at the overall health of women at two years. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and that's not presented. And who's yet. supporting the additional the follow-on treatment? Uh, it's an NIH uh, supo NIH, sponsored okay. study. So really, these these folks are now. Uh, I just want to kind of try to look at this very importantly because, okay, so the people that are in this trial may be actually committed, or we have committed to them, to be on treatment for the rest of their lives? Or, uh, or? No, um, because the, the, the women in this trial get treatment according to the government standard of care, the Botswana I government gotcha, standard okay. of care. So the Botswana government is um, is supporting the treatment. Okay. We supported the study intervention and gave gave women, we uh, and we got support from drug companies to give uh, the medicines to women at higher CD4 counts through six months. Mm -hmm. Beyond six months, everyone who did not qualify for government, for Botswana government treatment, comes off of heart and is monitored um, and goes back on at the, through the government so treatment the government, program. Government, these women yeah. are government. So we are not committed to their lifelong treatment. We're lucky that in Botswana, the government of Botswana commits to their lifelong treatment. Do, so, but these women weren't committed to that treatment before they got into the trial. Is that true, or, or were they? No. Um, before the outside of the trial, only women uh, with CD4 counts less than 200 would have been eligible to be on. All women that way, or is it just? Uh, I'm just thinking how how do they, how do you manage to get people on the trial if they're already given this? It's just in this case for the the children. But. So uh, we enrolled all CD4 counts, um, and about um, fewer than 20 percent, uh, fewer than 20 percent actually were qualified for treatment when we met them at the, in, the, in, in pregnancy. Those women would start started on the government standard of care uh, regimen. Uh, the remaining 80% we randomized and we gave them drugs through six months postpartum okay. and then um, for that duration. Great. Well, this seems to me to be a very effective program and I'm really hopeful that it, it does get operationally put into operation pretty quickly by the government. It would be great. Thanks. Thank you very much. Thanks. Thanks.